I use the language. If they train me, I would never get what I want to get because they're strictly textbook. It's the difference between telling somebody and making a suggestion. The entrapment is if I go and tell him, yo, come on, let's go rob a bank, and you know that was not his intention, that was my intention. So I'm entrapping him. I don't make the suggestions. I may go and say, damn, there's a lot of money in there, boy. I see all the motherfuckers dropping off all that damn money. And he feeds into it. And he go, shit, I sure like to take that. What about your current target? Are your handlers trying to suggest that you... I don't suggest anything. I wait till as we speak and to get to know each other what we speak about. So when he brought up camping, that was my key opening right there. The door opened up for me to make a suggestion now. I said, yeah, oh, that's cool, man. We can all go camping. I said, you know, why don't we just go a little further? We could train, man, like we do in the military. I said, brother, if you wanted to go and, and fight for the Muslim state, he said, well, I got to consult my shake. I said, see, that's what's wrong with you, brother. You brothers always talk that jihad stuff, but when somebody give you the opportunity to make a move to fight for, for the Islam, you are not going to fight for the Islam. You all talk that talk, but you won't walk the walk. He's not really a good Muslim. We're going to get some coffee. That motherfucker stole the coffee grinding machine. He stole the coffee urn. And I told him straight up, after he done it like his fourth stealing, I said, yo, man, did you consult your sheikh and your imam when you were stealing all that stuff? I ain't got to wear no kufi. I ain't got to wear no kafaya. I ain't got to wear a goddamn thing to say I'm Muslim. I said, that should already been established way before we was born. What drew me to the Islam was more of that militant aspect. Not a jihadist, but more of a stand up, take no bullshit. Brothers and sisters, you must be abreast what's happening over the world. You must read. Your first reading is Quran and Sunnah. Nice community, nice community of brothers, man. You know what I mean? Some of them used to be Panthers, and some used to be New African, you know, brothers. Me and Siraj, me and him used to sit down and talk. We were good friends. All the brothers are good friends. We all the types. Just that, that inner circle, the inner circle and the outer circle. I was part of the security council. Crack academic was bad, man. It was really bad. We used to clean up neighborhoods, we used to clean up the drug dealers. I provide them intel for all the, all the drug dealers would be at. I was an asset to the community. I loved it. I loved it. Smith say it was around the time that we were dealing with the uh, drug problem here in the neighborhood. We had a very good impression of him. You know, he was very much involved. He was knowledgeable about certain things. He has a very pleasant personality. He's very, very intelligent, man. Very intelligent. What do you think your reputation at the mosque is now? Oh, man, it's probably, oh, we're gonna kill that motherfucker when I see him, boy. We're gonna put a mud hole in him, boy. I broke a solemn oath against another Muslim. They don't give a shit if the other Muslim's bad or not. He's a Muslim. Did you know Tariq Shah? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, he was part of this community too. His family, I mean, beautiful brother. At yesterday's arraignment, an upbeat but shackled Shah greeted the packed court gallery of supporters and press with the Arabic greeting, may peace be upon you. Out of all the cases I worked on, 
That was the only one who called me to testify. And I worked on more than eight goddamn cases. A whole bunch of them come out the mosque. Who knows me? They couldn't believe it. They said, oh, man, not Saeed, no. He'd been with us too long. He saw us, but he would not look in our direction. He saw us, you know. And I don't know what's in a man's heart, but how could you not feel guilty? Imam Suraj put a fatwa out on me, okay? And I'm not going into any details with how the words was pronounced, how he put it in there. He put a fatwa out on it. Now, y'all journalists, y'all know what fatwa is. I ain't gonna tell you exactly what words he used because I don't know exactly what words. I'm getting it from people I know, already told me. One thing about the government, the government will use you and they will drop your ass like a hot motherfucking stone. And don't be a motherfucking convict or they really get over on you then. I spent all my money this week, man. Ain't that a bitch? That's, 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 that's $11. This is all I got, man. Would you consider this full-time work? They consider it full-time, so I don't see no full-time money. What would you say your services are worth? My, my services need to be at least over 3500 What are you basing that rate on? I base it on my investigation techniques, infiltrating some radical fucking group that they're not even sure about. Now, the only way I could, I could push their fucking wig back unless I just tell them I'm out of here. Cause I'm not gonna bust my ass. You got me waking up five o'clock in the fucking morning chasing a fucking ghost. Answer the phone. Hello. Hey, I see you. You see me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Look at him. <laughs> Just like his teeth his dad. Out. His teeth like fell out? Yeah. Oh, it's growing back though, right? Yeah. Not yet. Uh oh. Not yet. Okay. I love you. Hey. And living this type of life, man, you lose out on a lot of shit, man. Family life. Social life. Do you think your present right now is in any way related to your past? What I've done in the past, I don't even like to bring it back up. I really don't. You know, even if you try to bounce back even to make amends for the things you may have done. Got to deal with it, man. Got to deal with it. Got to deal with it. I was a revolutionary, a revolutionary activist. Black Robin Hood. I was with a certain crew that was, uh, setting up certain institutions to be uh, appropriated for our cause. Postal service, banks, 
New York City Transit. Right, so all we did was just expropriate it back to the other people, the masses. We used to, you know, drop off a few money and stuff at the marsh, you know. Wouldn't tell them where we, where we got it from, you know what I mean? I hung out with a lot of transit cops, court officers and all that. I did that for the purpose of them assuming that I was one of them. Then all my shit just crumbled down. I got, I got caught out there and got arrested. Yeah, I was charged with grand larceny, impersonation of New York City transit cop, possession of weapons. When were you first approached by the FBI? Oh, I was approached, man, when I was arrested. So the guys, okay, we tell you what. Here's our card. You need something, you let us know. Now, you want to make a deal? You're facing 20 years right now as it is. And I said, damn, 20 fucking years in the feds. So I said, fuck it. I called him in. I said, yeah, what, what you want to speak on, man? After World Trade Center, they felt that certain Muslim communities domestically was involved. I happened to know Blind Sheikh, that I was part of the security detail. So they felt that I knew the routine, which I didn't really. So how often would they come and ask you for intelligence? Oh, it'd be like three times a week. So I was their boy all the way until the time I came out. After 9 11, I got a call. He said, Look, we're gonna come by and talk. I said, Okay. I opened the door. He came in. He had another agent with him. They asked me to come with them full time. This wasn't no recruitment shit. Sign up, you know, say, Welcome aboard, you know. This was clandestine shit, you know. COVID operation bullshit, you don't exist. You know what I mean? Truthfully speaking, y'all got him thinking that he's he's like the top-notch terrorist around here. That he he just can't be touched. He's untouchable. But in reality, he ain't nothing. He ain't he ain't going nowhere. I never been around a target that steals petty. I mean, being Muslim at that, that's that's not acceptable. I mean, that's petty. Okay, all right, bye. I'm not feeling this, man. And this is the first time I ever felt like this. As long as I've been doing this work, I never felt this. So your instinct says this one just isn't right? Okay. Not right that he do me bodily harm, but because he's unpredictable. He ain't the brightest, but he ain't the dumbest either.
Alright, you ready? Yeah. My name is uh, Khalifa Alakili from Pittsburgh. In uh, 1991, I accepted Islam, took Shahada. What was the religion that you were born into? Well, we're, we're all born Muslim, but uh, I was raised Protestant. Islam teaches us how to rectify our inner self, which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said is the greatest jihad. The word jihad is simply means struggle. And the greatest jihad that every believer, man and woman, will go through is that inner struggle against our lower bestial desires. The more things that we do as Muslims, and the more of a closer relationship that we can have with our Creator. He was always talking about the cause, the cause, the cause, you know, and, you know, some guys pray, other guys fight. ASA, which means Assalamu Alaikum, Brother K, check this movie. It's a series called Homeland about terrorists, right? Which I actually did, and I actually enjoyed it, but, yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, he had, but, but, but it was like, it was to help him talk about that topic. I was coming back from the store, and... Sharif's truck came around the corner, so I waved at him, and uh, he stops the truck, and the passenger side opens up. They bum rushed it. The bureau brings in another CHS. What is CHS? Just a confidential human source. Name turns out to be Muhammad. All I was supposed to do was introduce him to Khalifa. Just let him know, yo, I have an individual Muslims coming in, he's a recruiter for the Taliban, or he's a recruiter for the Al-Qaeda, you know, he's a good brother, you know, maybe y'all should meet. Short and simple. Before I could even introduce the fucking dude to the fucking POI, the motherfucker was jumping out my car already just to meet him. I'm like, what the fuck? The guy got out and he came up to me, gave me the greeting, assalamu alaikum kissed me on both cheeks and I swear to you when I walked away from that situation I walked away feeling like I just played a part in some Hollywood terrorist movie that I just met like the leader of some terrorist organization actually right there on the spot he wanted to go have some coffee or sit down with me and uh, I told him no you know I still have to go uh, visit my mother and I'm actually on my way there and get ready to catch the bus to go there you know I, I walked away he got back in the truck they still wanted me to proceed. I told him, man, I feel right going into that man's house, man, inquiring what's up, knowing that he just finished telling me that more than 20 minutes ago, he was at his mother's house. Oh, well, uh, tell, tell him that uh, uh, Muhammad got a card for his mother and, and, and uh, er, er, everything gonna be all right, so we didn't realize he was there. We just heard some noise at the door, so we knocked. So I said, really? Really, I said, that sound real deep on the cover, huh? Real deep. I said, I'm not gonna feel too comfortable at, but I'm gonna do it anyway. But well, I'm letting y'all know, when you fuck up, don't come at me and say that it was my fault. I ain't hearing it. Next thing I know, it was the front door. He hit a code on a keypad into the entrance to coming into the building, and, and I had it set up to ring to my cell phone. I've never had any visitors just pop up at my apartment, you know, unannounced. So I, I answered it, and I was like, "Leave it's me, Sharif." Sharif, he said, "Who, who, 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 who?" It was Sharif. Sharif was saying, "Oh, I'm here with Muhammad, and we figured that you know we'd uh, we'd come and see you and sit down with you, and spend some time." And I said, "Well, I'm not, I'm not at home." I lied to him and said, "I'm not at home." It was so clear that I didn't want to meet these guys. Like seriously, like I literally made up excuse after excuse after excuse. The next morning, walked up here to the corner, and that's when, uh, you know, quote unquote, Muhammad came from around the corner, 
Prince, you know, just appeared out of nowhere. You know, he had his hotel downtown Pittsburgh, and yet he was here in Wilkinsburg at 9.30 in the morning without no car, no vehicle. He just so happened to have that card from my mother on him. I reluctantly agreed to go to McDonald's and, and, and uh, you know, have some coffee with him. The morning that, uh, that we all came in here, we actually sat at this, this first booth right here, and that's whenever he began to talk about uh, his people being involved in jihad and whatnot and fighting. And this was the location that we sat down and had the coffee with him. So we exchanged numbers, and actually that morning he drove me home. After that, I didn't hear anything from him. Know what that means, Taliban? Oh, yeah? It means student, student of knowledge. Ain't nothing wrong with them, brother. OK. The wearing of the turban been in existence thousands of years before the Taliban was even formulated in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Oh, OK. Alhamdulillah. Actually, Allah is just an Arabic name for God. Christians and Jews that speak Arabic. It's like my third time. You can no longer message, you tell him to learn more. See, he said, all right, you can no longer. So that means he don't want to correspond with me. See, that, these motherfuckers, they fucked up. Watch this, and I'm, I'm gonna call these motherfuckers and let, and let them know. Yo, Jay, I don't know what's going on, he didn't block me from the knife. He knew that was me. All right, okay. All right, later. You know, then they fucked up that. I, I'm not even gonna deal with that. Let them, let them de deal with the headaches. with your bullshit. I mean, I could have set them up and just take a fucking handgun and just put it somewhere and say, yo, y'all calling the locals, have the locals grab him right now. Boom, he got a gun. And it's all over with. But they don't want to do it that way. And I told them, I said, I'm not here to entrap nobody. They trying to make me force this dude into saying something to support terrorism. I said, the dude is not a fucking terrorist, man. He's not even a pseudo-terrorist. He's nothing but an oxymoron. I said, what, what y'all been doing for the last three years? Y'all ain't seen nothing? If y'all ain't seen nothing, what y'all expect me to see? Birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna get you something next month, okay? Okay. All right? Yeah. All right, tell your mommy I said hello. Yeah. Mm. Nobody raised my bell. I don't expect you, I know I don't expect to make you. I don't have company here. When that bell rings, I'm on my P's and Q's.
And believe it or not, if I think you're a threat to me, I will liquidate you with extreme prejudice. <coughs> I honestly believe if that incident, if that guy that, that the agent uh, Rob and them brought up, if he wouldn't have did what they did, believe me, this thing could have went a little further. Right. He sensed things, so I, don't, I shouldn't have to wait for him to even, even if it came to exposing me. And I don't want to be put in that, that situation. So I definitely have to stay under the, the radar to a certain extent. But that dude ain't going to bust a grape. He ain't going to throw rice at a wedding, believe me. You know, he's just, you know, I'll, eventually y'all may get him on something else. <laughs> Maybe tax fraud, <laughs> cross, crossing state lines. <laughs> you know, but I think it's just the bureau going to have to take a different approach at him. May have to go at him hardcore and just get him for the hell of it. You know what I mean? Black ball trick. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Later. Now I'm out of here. Right now I'm looking at a projection of me being with my fucking son. Sharif left me alone in his truck. He, and uh, when he did that, there was a letter sitting on the dashboard from the welfare office. So I picked it up and I snapped a picture of it because I knew he was FBI. Wanted to know who this guy was. And his real name is uh, Saeed S. Torres. Come on, Sheba. Come on. This was a guy who used to email me all the time, Sheba. call me, you know. Sheba. Dang. Let's go out for coffee. I'll pick Dang. you up. But a lot of that slowed down dramatically after he introduced me to this quote unquote Muhammad. I put his phone number through Google. Everyone should be rewarded for the things they do. That's him. Either by Allah or by the organization that does this thing. Muhammad, he was an informant for the FBI, and his real name is Shahid Hussein. I felt that I was almost obligated to expose these guys. Shiva, 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 go, go, please. I sent out an email very blatantly to the subject, mm. FBI informants. There's hundreds of people on this email list. I told anybody, if anybody wants to question me about this, they can do so. Sharif. He's gone. He's moved out completely, like out of the clear blue. Hello? Yes, how are you? How are you? This is Steve Downs. Good. I'm very good. And I just want to make sure you understand that uh, some people may be listening in on this line of uh, FBI. Okay. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to uh, go over your statement. You, you first met Sharif in September, October of 2011? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Khalifa found out about our group, Project Salam, on the internet and sent us this email. What really was striking about this email was that it was so detailed and so specific and that through a series of Googles and telephones and stuff, he had so cleverly caught the FBI trying to catch him. I, I've never seen a case quite like that. Yesterday, I called the number that came to mm -hmm. verify that the number called him. Yeah. And I said, Shahid Hussein. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 so I know it's definitely his number. Um, I just wanted to, uh, well, one of the things that we were thinking about is that uh, we would like to have a press conference down in Washington, and then maybe next Thursday, and call attention to all of this and make a big deal about it and really call the FBI out on it. Um, are, you, are you comfortable with that? I, my only concern is that I, I don't want them retaliating against you simply because they couldn't put a case together. but. Um, 
I, I think sometimes simply